Hush Puppies is one of the most iconic brands in America. At one point, you could find Hush Puppies everywhere. There aren't many casual shoes in the market today, but Hush Puppies invented casual. To know where the Hush Puppies shoes came from, we must go back to 1883. Mr. Krauss and his uncle, Fred Herf, were sons of Prussian immigrants. They came to America and brought with them two centuries worth of leather tanny heritage. Together, the both of them created a company which sold shoe accessories like leather, button hooks, lacing, soles, and various other goods at wholesale prices. The company also bought finished shoes and sold them to customers via retail. In 1908, Mr. Krauss and his younger son, Victor Krauss, started the Wolverine Tanning Company in Rockford, Michigan. They wanted to sell leather to the shoemaking businesses there. The Wolverine Company got its first breakthrough in business when Victor Krauss created a new tanning process for horsehide. The new leather was cheap to make and durable. It was so good, they replaced their cow leather with their new horse leather. Customers loved it. Later, the company would go on to create its first shoe product, Heavy Duty Boots. They advertised the Wolverine boots as a thousand mile shoes which would resist wear and tear. Wolverine boots were so popular they became the most popular brand in small towns. The company's profits grew by almost 700% from 1916 to 1923. Then World War II came along and the US government drafted companies into the war effort. Wolverine was assigned with a mission to create gloves for the troops. The US government also suggested the company should use pigskin to make military gloves. There was one problem, the task was impossible. Pigskin was notoriously hard to tan. Removing the skin from pig's flesh was difficult. The skin would tear out with the flesh. In fact, separating all the pig meat from the skin just damaged the hide. One Wolverine employee was quoted as saying, it looked like these pigs didn't care to be skinned. Making leather from pig skin was near impossible, but not for Victor Krauss. He saw an opportunity for innovation. Victor Krauss assembled a team and managed to make a device that would separate pig skin from flesh without damaging the goods. Pig skin they made was soft and flexible, perfect for gloves. Happy with their work, they patented the machine and sent their shipment of pig skin gloves to the US Army. When the war ended, Wolverine was one of the largest pigskin tanneries in the USA. Wolverine were in a good financial position. They had become the largest employer in Rockford and turned it into a company town. They paid the same as General Motors did and people liked the company. Wolverine had squeezed all it could get from this tiny part of the country so it was time for Wolverine to branch out into the world. Pigskin was too soft for Wolverine's signature heavy-duty boots. So Adolf Krauss, the brother of Victor Krauss, decided he would make casual shoes from pigskin. The Wolverine board of directors were not too enthusiastic with these pigskin shoes, but they did promise to do some market testing first. Little would they know, these pigskin shoes would change the world they knew forever. But before they could show off their new casual wear to the world, they had to give it a name first, so the Wolverine company went to work. The iconic Hush Puppy shoes got their name from Jim Muir, a salesman at the Wolverine company. One day, Jim Muir was dining with his friend in Tennessee. When the dogs barked, Jim noticed his dining partner would throw the dogs some Hush Puppies. Hush Puppies were an old southern cuisine. They were fried confitter balls. Jim asked about the strange Hush Puppies name and was told farmers used to toss these fried cornmeal balls quite the barking dogs. So the fried corn dough balls were called Hush Puppies because they could hush the dogs and keep them quiet. Jim was instantly reminded that barking dogs was slang for sore feet at the time. And since Wolverine's new pigskin shoes could work on sore feet just as Hush Puppies worked on barking dogs, Jim pitched the Hush Puppies name to the high ups and they agreed. The Hush Puppies shoes themselves were made using worry-free suede that promised comfort above all else. Wolverine were also the first to add Scotchgard, a protective material from another company called 3M, to their leather to make their shoes water-resistant and resistant to scuff and stains. Hush Puppy shoes were also more comfortable to wear than feet. Victor Krauss loved the shoes so much, when he died, he was buried in a lime green pair. The ad agency tapped to provide designs for the Hush Puppies logo wanted to name the casual shoes Lancer, but they relented when they realized their client were bent on the Hush Puppies name. This ad agency did however provide 10 designs for the logo. One of them was a special type of dog called the Besset Hound, a friendly, easygoing dog originally used by hunters to hunt for wild game. Besset Hounds are also known to be good with other dogs and children. President Adolf Krauss ultimately chose the Besset Hound for the Hush Puppies logo in 1957. Thus, the Hush Puppies shoes were born. 
Now Wolverine was finally ready to find out how people reacted to their shoes. In October 1957, hush puppies were introduced to the world at the National Shoe Fair in Chicago. Retailers flocked to the Wolverine booth. They had never seen such a unique shoe before. Perhaps it was the brushed sweet uppers or the lightweight creep soles. Maybe it was because hush puppies embodied the casual laid-back life of the suburbs to a team. Anyhow, the reactions were overwhelmingly positive. One look at the hush puppy shoes were enough to draw crowds. It was official. Wolverine had a popular product in their hands and they had to release it out into the wild. In the following year, in 1958, the Wolverine company did the unthinkable. They launched a national advertising campaign for their pigskin shoes, something never before seen at the time for the shoe industry. Hush puppies were marketed as comfort shoes and attracted the attention of lots of people. The Wolverine company had good timing. At the time, workers were moving from farms to offices and farmers were leaving their countryside and going to the suburbs. So the sale of heavy-duty boots and work shoes that Wolverine had been so proud of were declining. No one wanted those restrictive hard shoes anymore. They all bought hush puppies for $8.95 a pair. Thanks to this paradigm, the casual shoe boom was assured. Demand for casual shoes shot up and hush puppy shoes were at the right time and right place to ensure mass adoption. The shoes were the first soft sweet casual shoes in America back in 1958. It didn't take long before people began wearing their casual laid-back hush puppies to kick back and relax. Hush puppies were hot items in the late 1950s and 60s. A year after their release, hush puppies ended up on the feet of Prince Philip from England when he visited the US in 1959. Celebrities like Warren Beatty and Perry Como also joined in the trend and wore their hush puppies with pride. In Las Vegas, the Rat Pack also wore hush puppies. The Rat Pack was an informal group of entertainers, singers, and alias actors, which included Frank Sinatra, Mickey Rooney, Errol Flynn, and Nat King Cole. Now that's star power. From a down, hard and frail, and I'll call you if I need you. Taylor, it's a blue. Then they nursed it, and they rehearsed it. By 1959, a million pairs of hush puppies were made, and in 1963, one in ten adults in the US owned a pair of hush puppy shoes. The first hush puppy store opened in the USA the same year. That year, hush puppies went overseas for the first time. Canada became the first international licensee of the brand, followed by the UK, South Africa, Australia, Japan, and most of Central America by the end of the 1970s. In the 1960s, hush puppies infiltrated pop culture when the British invasion bands like the Beatles toured America. They wore hush puppies too. Movies had actors wear them as well. Austin. In the hit comedy Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, the actors Dr. Evil played by Mike Myers and his clone Mini-Me wore custom-made Hush Puppy shoes. In 1965, Hush Puppy saved rock and roll. Keith Richards was in his prime. The Rolling Stones guitarist was performing but he accidentally touched his guitar against an ungrounded microphone at a concert in Sacramento, California. Keith Richards was promptly electrocuted and passed out. According to the hospital, Keith Richards survived thanks to the creep song of the Hush Puppy's shoe, which insulated and protected him from the worst of the electric shock. And so the future of rock and roll was saved by Hush Puppies. In 1974, Hush Puppies also wound up in popular songs. Jimmy Buffet paid homage to the Hush Puppies in his song Come Monday with the lyric, I've got my Hush Puppies on. Come Monday reached the third place on the charts that year. I got my hush puppies on. In 1965, the Wolverine Company changed its name to Wolverine Worldwide as it IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange. This was the high point for the hush puppy shoes. So do you know what hush puppies are? If you do, what are your experiences with them? Thank you for watching, like and subscribe.